Hey YouTube, what is going on? Prepared Wander in the Man Cave today, and we're going to be doing a little review of how to build or what to put in a pocket survival kit. I've done survival kit videos in the past. There's tons of them out there on YouTube, but this is something that I've done recently, so I wanted to update you, show you what I'm working with, what I think about it, the things that I put in it, my thoughts behind it, and then we'll also talk about other containers that survival kits go into. So there's lots to cover, so stick around. So when we think of pocket survival kits, I think the first thing that most guys or gals go to thinking about is the Altoids 10. This, you know, became a pretty popular way of building a small kit. Um, it gave you a metal container to burn char cloth in, so it, that made a lot of sense. But, you know, as you can tell, these things are so small. Um, there's just not a lot you can get into them. I mean, you really have to be judici judicious with your um, stuff that you're putting in it, and everything tends to be tiny. So there's better ways, better containers out there. And I'm going to show you a kit that I put together based on a container that I've had for a while. You can see the size difference in this. That way. That way. So this container um, I got from countycom.com. Uh, I believe they still sell this. Uh, I'm not sure. You'll have to check their website and look for it in, under their container section. Um, it's a, uh, a stainless uh, metal container box with a plastic Tupperware type lid. Now it's not waterproof. Um, that's always the concern with these kind of containers that it's not waterproof. So you could you could go to a plastic container that's waterproof, but then you don't have the metal pan. I like this little metal pan because actually if I needed to, I could boil water in this thing. That's the point of it. Um, uh, with some aluminum foil, I could probably do some char cloth with it as well. Um, so there's limitations to everything that you pick out. This is what I'm going with right now because I like the size of it. And there it is. You can see that. All right, so let's see what's inside. First thing, um, I have some flagging tape that I've rolled up, put into a small plastic bag. Flagging tape has multiple uses. Uh, you can mark a trail with it. You can mark your position with it. Put it high in a branch. It will wave around in the wind, and then the searchers will be able to see you your position if you're sitting down in the woods. So it's, it's a great item to have. Carry it a little bit with you. It goes a long way. Next item is uh, a roll of dental floss. This is some cordage that I can use for sewing, uh, stitching myself up, uh, you know, whatever I needed to use it for. Uh, fishing line it's gonna work for. It just gives you a couple options uh, for cordage. And it doesn't really take up much space as most of the stuff. Uh, two lighters, these are the mini Bix. Um, if you can see, I've got these tied off with zip ties so they don't discharge in the container. Um, I like having a couple of these. Well, one is not enough for me. I think a, a Bic lighter is probably one of the most useful survival items you can ever have. and That's what I like to have in my kit. Just a little piece of um, hot glue melt. Um, this would go into like a craft melt stick gun or something like that. I, I've had this for quite a while. Um, it's really kind of a unique piece to put in your gear, but if, if I need to, I can melt this down and use this as glue for something. Maybe I'm making a, a makeshift frog gig or arrowhead, something like that. I've got some of this hot melt glue that I can, I can melt down and utilize for that. Tea candle. Always works well to keep you warm in a situation. These are waxed cotton swabs. I think these are, if I remember correctly, these are like dental um, swabs that have been soaked in hot wax. So definitely a great fire starter. Mini zip ties, more repairs, more building of things. Need if I'm building like a makeshift uh, fishing pole, I could certainly certainly utilize these. Little bobbin of trip wire or snare wire. Ra 
razor blade. Saw blade. Certainly not going to cut any trees down with it, but for small crafts, when you're trying to fashion some stuff, it's better than nothing. Some braided fishing line with a hook. On a nice little handy hand spool. Don't ask me where I got this hand spool. This was gifted to me a long time ago. Um, I've never seen one again. I'm sure it's something you can make yourself out of uh, wood or plastic, but uh, this is the one I got. Some steel wire. This is um, actually picture hanging wire, which comes apart and has more strands to it. So just another wire option, more for repair, snaring, whatever. Mini ferro rod. This is the Boy Scouts of America mini ferro rod. Works great. It's a hot spark. It throws really nice sparks for the size that it is. Um, just a great backup to the Bic lighters. Of course, a whistle. ACR. Here we have a float for fishing, a little bobber, sewing kit, there's some thread, there's needles, there's uh, some buttons, some safety pins. It's an interesting little knife. Um, this is um, something I got uh, in a trade with somebody and it's an SOL tin uh, survival tin knife it comes on one of their their survival kits um, not the greatest little blade in the world but it's better than nothing it's interesting I, I really need to take this out in the woods and kind of mess around with it and see what I can do with it I'd like to see how it shaves wood and can I tie it to a stick and use it for like a mini spear or something? I don't know. I mean, there's just different possibilities with it, but you know, you gotta go out and practice with these things and try them out sometimes. Can opener. Nice mini Victorinox. Lots of purposes with that. A lot of blades on it. There's some scissors on here, so great little pocket knife to have. Fishing kit. So there's sinkers. Hooks. Swivels. Some fishing line in there. A little bit of everything. In here I've got uh, water purification tablets, a coffee filter, uh, whirl bags which I can use to purify water in, and then this little um, handmade uh, signal mirror uh, made out of reflective material. Pro knot card, just in case you need to polish up on your knots, it's got them all in there. This came from an Essie knife uh, purchase that I made. They always conclude these little survival cards with their knives. Just kind of a handy little card. It's got some measurements on it. It's got uh, air to ground signals. It's got some instructions. And last but not least, I've got this uh, zombie tinder. I did a review on these. Um, I'll try to post a link at the end of the video. These things burn a really long time, over 10 minutes if I remember correctly. So it's a nice little... Uh, uh, man-made uh, fire starter tinder to have in your kit. I think if you paired this stuff with a mylar blanket um, it would give you a pretty decent kit um, and it certainly covers a lot of the basics water purification, fire starting, cordage, um, food procurement, uh, repair, 
it's got all kinds of things in it, so it's definitely going to work out and um, give you the necessities. And the nice thing is, the size of this tin fits perfectly in a BDU pocket or a jacket pocket. It's not too large, certainly not too small like the Altoids tin. But um, I think next, let's look at some other tins and talk about their size and give you some options for purchasing tins. Now here are two tins that I have that I've, got, I've collected um, for the past couple of years. Um, this is the SE Survival tin. You can buy this tin separately or you can buy it full. You can get that from Five Call Survival Supply, which I'll have a link uh, down below to them so you can check out uh, their survival supplies and their containers that they have. Now this is much bigger than the container that I'm using, um, maybe too big, but certainly you can boil water in this, you can do char cloth, um, you can eat out of this pan. I mean this thing is, it's, it's practically a cooking pan, the size of it. It's very deep and gives you a lot of options. See I've, I've used it over a fire before. Um, it's a nice tin and it holds a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, the problem is it's just very big and heavy and it's gonna, it, once you fill this thing up, you're probably not gonna wanna carry it in your, on your person. You're probably gonna wanna put it in a pack of some sort. Um, but there's that. Now I did a review of these survival tins when they were full with the survival supplies that they came with. I'll put a link down uh, on the back of this video with that as well. The next one is this container, which is really interesting. This is the Suma Elite Kit container. This is a heavy duty, um, I think this is aluminum, if I'm not mistaken. metal container. You can see there, assume a container. Solica Survival Systems S3. Pretty heavy duty container. It's got this Velcro stuck to the front of it, which you could probably rip off if you needed to use this in the fire um, to make char cloth, but it's a lot, it's a definitely a nice size kit. This is more in lines with the size of kit that I'm using right now. So if you're looking for that, that perfect size that'll fit in a BDU pocket or pants pocket, jacket, field jacket, uh, this is probably gonna be your, one of your best bets. And this is a five call survival supply. You can buy uh, the complete kit. And um, I think they may even have uh, the containers by themselves that you can purchase. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you can buy these by themselves or not, but it's definitely an option. Um, if not, they come stocked and they're, the price is not that bad for a survival kit. They come with a really nice um, array of stuff and I'll have a link at the end of this video showing you the kit that I reviewed when it was full. So those are some options. Now, of course, another option always is a plastic bag. And one of the better types of plastic bags that you can get are these Allosacks. Um, aloe sacks just seal up a lot better than a Ziploc. They're waterproof. Um, so you can put your cont contents in that. It's going to be much lighter and a softer container to carry your survival kit in. Uh, so definitely a great option. These are a five call survival supply as well. So lots of options out there. You just need to experiment. Go through your gear boxes. See what kind of stuff you have. A lot of the stuff you can purchase at hardware stores. Uh, big box stores, um, order your containers um, from the links that I'm providing, and then build yourself a kit and you've got something you All can right, take with that you. that is it for today. Uh, another video done and be looking um, for another video this week as well. I'm going to be doing um, a video on the first burn of my hot tent stove stove that I purchased. So that's coming up. Uh, be looking for that soon. Um, as always, please like, subscribe, and share. Make sure you check out the Facebook group link below. Check out my Instagram link below, um, and also my Amazon store below. All that stuff's ready for you guys to check out. A lot of fun, and uh, we'll see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer.